Follow me on Instagram. Do never ever miss any of my crazy updates. Hi guys and welcome to another vlog. I'm driving this. This is the 2024 Mercedes GLA facelift. This is the second generation model's facelift and this is actually not the key of the vehicle. This is the key of an AMG model. However, if I remove the key from the car, the car automatically turns off. So new trends in the automobile industry, which can get a bit frustrating because even though this is the facelift, certain things have been downgraded in this car. Now straight away, let's open the engine bay. This being the 220D Ford Matic, obviously gets four wheel drive. The petrol does not get it. Okay, the engine is quite noisy. The Mercedes logo is here. That is the engine cover. There's insulation there, gas strut, of course. And there are certain changes which have been done to this car in terms of a few things like the lights are new, the bumper is new, the grill is the same on this AMG line. There's a progressive line which gets new vertical grill, and that's about it. Yeah, very minor changes. They say change for the sake of it. Now these are chrome pins which are there on the grill, which actually looks quite nice. That is the indicator. The lights are new. Yes, these happen to be LED high performance lights, and that is the DRL. What else have they done? Well, they have finally put a camera at the front. Earlier there was a provision for the same, but now there is a camera. Meanwhile, yeah, rest of it. Remains largely the same. Yeah, the bumper is actually new and I think it gets front parking sensors. Yes, those are functional front parking sensors. Earlier there was a provision for it, but there were no front parking sensors. Okay, there's one at the side also. So there's six parking sensors at the front because now it has got self park as well. Profile remains largely the same. Alloy wheel design is new on the progressive line. This being the AMG line continues with the same five spoke AMG wheels. The tire size happens to be 235, 15, 19. Mercedes Benz written here on the brake calipers. There's a camera here. It gets 360 degree parking camera now. It also has some light coming out from there. Earlier car did not have keyless entry. So you have to use the key to enter the car. This car has it on all the doors. So I feel sometimes they intentionally don't put features because they're like, what will you do in the facelift? I don't like this face stuff happening here. The lights get revision because obviously you have to do something. 4Matic written here. GLA 220D. Actually, this is the variant to buy. And the bumper seems more or less the same as before. So not many revisions at the rear. Faisal Khan's fingers of truth. Disappointed with this face stuff happening here. <laughs> Also this, where's the real exhaust? The real exhaust is actually there. Okay, now let's quickly open the boot and Mercedes logo on the rear wiper as well. In fact, when I did the video of this car two, three years back, I was like so much attention to retail, so many logos here and there. People are like that just to increase the prices and that's true to a certain extent. Spare wheel is in the right place now. Yeah, tire size 145, 18, 19. Well, this is heavy, but earlier they had the spare tire on top. Thankfully, now it is in the right place. Boot is like 435 liters, decent, not very big. This is, I think, the first aid kit. And then I can obviously decline it, but I'll do that from the front. You get light here. You get a power tailgate as well. So Mercedes is definitely adding a lot more features in the GLA, which is the entry level SUV. I can call it a crossover SUV because now it has got 4Matic. It had it earlier also. The diesel had it. The petrol was never treated well. Isofix child seat mounts. In fact, I can put the seat down like this. 60 40 i think that will come out okay uh, also yeah that guy can be lonely yes there you see 40 20 40 that's very practical seats are nice and comfortable i think they are a bit upright center passenger does get a head this is scooped out magazine holder good amount of space under thigh support is not great honestly headroom seems decent enough height adjustable seat belts and you obviously get light hook handle everything is there rear ac vents and there are two USB-C charging sockets as well. This seems like an ashtray. There's a hump here, so center passenger will not really be comfortable. But seats are really nice and comfortable. Like, I love the red stitching here. Dashboard looks more or less the same as before, but it gets a new steering wheel now. That's good. It probably did not need it because that's what I think is a step back, in my opinion. But then I have very strong opinions. No Dynamics 5 indicators, rear fog lights, and let's get inside. So, if you notice, it gets these dual 10.25 inch screens like before, but now it has the latest Mercedes software, I think NTG7, something like that, which is slicker and new menus. Under thigh support is never an issue. And the usual bits, yeah, hard plastic slow down says airbag here because this guy's got seven airbags, door pockets also big. And I mean the usual bits, but no seat ventilation, seat memory, but no seat ventilation. And obviously very nice and comfortable seats. A bit on the stiffer side, dashboard looks lovely. You get this red stitching. All around on the steering wheel this is a new carbon fiber sort of treatment in the progressive line it has i think mercedes logos here a lot of them him in lighting almost everywhere and beautiful ac vents in fact very easy to use if i increase the temperature this becomes red which you can't see if i decrease it this becomes blue which i think you can't see right now come on guys you need to see properly 
Wireless charging pad seems small. USB charging socket. This is actually the key of the car, the usual Mercedes key. And here is the Audi pen because what I've realized is they have made it more inconvenient because earlier there was something to rest your dish area and there was a touch pad also. They've removed all that and now they're like card holder and more space here in the center console. Not really, not really nice. Physical volume controller, thankfully. This is for the drive mode. This is to activate the cameras. It has got self park thing, searching for driving more. I mean, the area to park. And then 360 degree parking camera. So yes, camera system has become fantastic and you can save positions and all that. Very slick to use. And it gets a new mode here known as off-road. There is the new off-road mode, which will load right now. Yes, this has been added, which Mercedes is adding in all their cars right now. Otherwise, it's a very slick system to use. Really nice. I like the info panel here usual bits so it's not like anything new obviously i'll show it to you when driving so i'll put it in that and obviously it has got ambient lighting it's got something known as seat kinetics which is basically what you know it is sort of a massage 64 color here for the ambient lighting now this, this display also gets an update because it's got more views now so there's the usual which we see in a lot of mercedes cars but there's also an off-road mode here which is quite good if you decide to take this car off-road which i'm sure not many will decide to so yes, easy to browse the screen, a lot of information, a lot of nice modes. The quality of the screen is fantastic. So new steering wheel with touch controls, which is a step back. Earlier you had physical controls because they are not so easy to use. And again, a fingerprint magnet. It has got wireless Apple CarPlay and Android Auto Connectivity. Now it has got a gesture enabled boot as well. So these are the certain features which have been added to this car. It has got five exterior colors and three interior color options. That's about it. <laughs> Not much has changed, but I think removing those buttons from here, rather the touchpad, removing physical controls on the steering wheel and all is a step back. But the horn, that is really nice and loud. And the steering wheel is adjustable both for reach as well as rake. Mercedes has given it a lot of features which are there on its higher end models, which is a good thing. But yes, they shouldn't have like deleted stuff. Anyways, Volkswagen has actually gone back to physical controls on the steering wheel with the updated Golf and they're saying that's a big update. So I hope Mercedes also does the same because this is not easy to use. Anyways, this carbon treatment on the AMG line is quite, quite funky, but there will be an AMG variant as well, the GLA 35 AMG. Anyways, let's start driving. All right, let's turn on the car. It says do not leave persons or animals in the vehicle. Let's turn on the car. Okay, it shows this whole Mercedes thing, which is now there in almost all their cars. And straight away, we are actually going to come into sport mode. I'm going to turn off the air conditioning. Air conditioning off, blower setting one, it says. It's not that intuitive to use because I want to shut the air conditioning. Why can't I just have an off button here? How difficult would that be? Is it off? Is it off? Yeah, now it is off. And I'm actually going to come into car settings, ESP, turn off ESP, come into the info mode and show you engine data left foot on the brake right foot on the accelerator has it lights off listen to it okay into drive mode performance is surprisingly very amazing yeah it pulls quite strongly the engine does have a lot of punch yes it's a very grunty motor because firstly this is just 1800 kgs of weight and this car is powered by a 2 liter four cylinder diesel engine 1950 cc in displacement which produces 190 horsepower which is quite a lot considering the size of this car and a torque output of 400 newton meters and the result is the performance is quite good it pulls very fast i mean it just is such a nice to drive car because of the performance this diesel is just amazing they've given it a lackluster petrol engine from renault nissan to overcome that or to compensate they've given it a fantastic diesel engine which is class leading because it has the most power the most torque the highest displacement and whatnot because bmw obviously has a very lame diesel engine in the x1 and audi obviously does not offer a diesel engine in the q3 in india at least globally they're still offering the diesel engine and that is the forward collision warning which is coming here it has now got blind view alert so blind spot alert on the outside rear view mirrors it also gets high beam assist so few things have been added here now because ground clearance is good going over speed breakers not a problem at all onto the throttle 
engine is vocal it is vocal but this 8 speed dual clutch automatic transmission very fast with shifts doesn't hesitate at all and gives you the right gears all the time it is quite quick with shifts in fact that is the whole joy of driving this car the engine and gearbox they are just made for freaking each other it pulls so fast and so quick it's just amazing the performance of this car will definitely put a massive smile on your face in fact it's so fast it's so quick with the shift that it kind of feels jerky at times so you have to hold your neck because when it upshifts you can feel the movement and yeah, just an amazing engine yeah i love this diesel engine because the diesel is a diesel is a freaking diesel what an engine we're just going to change this data to vehicle now the steering is nice like always mercedes is doing good steering wheels which offer good amount of feel and feedback and easy to twirl but the problem here is that the ride is on the stiffer side overall ride becomes good when you drive at higher speeds but at certain speeds over big portals this car fumbles and you can feel the inherent firmness and the stiffness of this car you can hear a lot of the road noise as well and that's where it feels a bit un mercedes like because you don't expect such things to happen with a mercedes car but this is obviously the gla the most not the most i mean it's not alone the more or most along with the a class the b class the gla cla all of them are un mercedes like they call it the new generation cars however they don't have the mercedes dna in them because they're not rear wheel drive they're front wheel drive now this has the formatic system so obviously it channels largely most of the power to the front wheels it can channel up to 30% power to the rear wheels that's about it maximum i think that's what it does and uh, you will not take this car off road even though it can go off road it's more about giving you better road grip grip levels are good tires have good amount of grip on offer brakes also strong yeah they are very strong but it's the gearbox and the engine which puts a massive smile on your face the petrol engine is a 1.3 liter unit which is obviously turbo petrol and i don't want to talk about it i would not recommend you buy it i can't recommend the x1 at all because the x1 petrol and diesel engine both are hopeless meanwhile if you're looking for a petrol car close your eyes get the audi q3 that 2 liter tfsi engine what an engine what an engine and the q3 definitely feels more premium and feels part of the q family this car does not feel part of the gl family because you drive this you drive the glc they kind of feel little disaligned in that regard however i can't deny the fact that mercedes has given it so many features including a dual roof which doesn't make sense why would you give me two two roofs why can't you just give me one big fat long panoramic sunroof i don't know why mercedes does it that way it's not like this is the s class they have to put mirrors right behind but still they do that weird things other weird thing is that this car does not get a center armrest at the rear why why doesn't it get such a basic feature doesn't make any sense so they do cost cutting in weird places in fact a facelift doesn't make much sense to me honestly because it feels like that programmed the facelift at the time of the launch of the car with the pre facelift because there was a provision for a front camera this car did not have it and there were provisions for front parking sensors this car did not have it i mean the pre facelift now with the facelift they've added all these things and certain things have been like negative here because these buttons are not easy to operate and they've removed the touchpad from here so i honestly feel now the facelift is usually done just for the sake of it it is pre planned you don't have to do a facelift people will buy the car but there has to be a reason to increase the prices as well now i'm not talking about mercedes alone but every brand is doing this bmw is also master of it they are lci life cycle impulse facelift they have the least freaking changes i don't know why they even bother to do a facelift yaar don't do it but don't remove crucial bits from the car because honestly i would have loved it if uh, the old steering buttons were there because they just feel so better to operate so we're going to come to a quick halt here and it's time to launch yet again and i'm going to change this particular mode to the rest of them are not usable but we'll put it into off road mode because we can left foot on the brake no there's no speedometer here i mean it's not the proper one i think the classic is the best but we'll launch it in sport and off we go listen to this okay i have caused a dust storm rear but that's it it's the performance which is the highlight in this car without a doubt which actually brings me to the various drive modes on offer so there are i think four five drive modes like is usually the case with mercedes cars there's comfort there's eco there's sport there's individual which will let you tweak a few things and there is also i was so stupid i was like abhi main aise browse karta hu which cannot be done here okay it's telling me something if i'm driving in off road mode i'm restricted or whatever so what it basically does is alters the engine the gearbox the esp system and also the freaking sound what it alters the sound that's a new thing in a diesel engine engine car it's altering the sound how is it doing it does it have active exhaust obviously not which actually brings me to the price of this car and a quick comparison with the competition the competition obviously comes from the BMW X1 and the Audi Q3 the X1 got an update recently but mm, not an impressive a car oh there the camera turns on on its own what is the most impressive honestly enough for me personally speaking 
is the Q3. The Q3 is a very underrated car. It's fantastic in a lot of ways, and oh my goodness, there is no U-turn. Is there a U-turn? Can we take a U-turn? We can. Let's try. Maybe someone is coming. Some VIP. Is that VIP me? No, it's not. Uh, because nobody is giving a salute or something. But jokes aside, let's go. Power. So yes, we were talking about the competition. This car's price range will start around 58.5 lakhs for the base petrol engine, going all the way till 67 and a half lakhs for this particular model, the diesel top and all-wheel drive. So I think they'll just be a standard petrol. There'll be a diesel without uh, formatic. I don't know. I don't care. What's important is that there is formatic available, at least with the diesel engine. With the petrol, it's not petrol avoidable. I know it's slightly cheaper and all that. Avoid it. Right now, all the three cars top end variants are priced between 63 to 64 lakhs on road Mumbai, with the GLA. Being the most expensive, giving the Creta driver his own treatment by honking. <laughs> Jokes aside, that was not a joke. I was serious about it. I was talking about how the pricing is done right now. 63 to 64 lakhs between that, the GLA being the most expensive. Uh, the Audi Q3 is the most affordable because when I was telling you about the price of the petrol, it's around 58 lakhs for the petrol X1 as well as the GLA. Similar pricing, but the petrol Audi Q3 is priced at 52.3 lakhs for the base variant. Super value for money. And the top end variant, well, the Q3 does offer you a lot more. It is smoother to drive, the ride is better, and the interior just feels so much more premium to me. I don't know when did I become an Audi fan, but definitely Audi is making some really good cars now. I just hope they bring the diesel here. And the Q3 is also available in a sportback variant. Meanwhile, this car is also available with the GLA 35 AMG, which will come with the facelift. I think they'll discontinue the old one. Price should be around 77, 78 lakh rupees. Considering the performance, well, that seems worth it. It's nice, but you pay a little bit more and you get the BMW M340 with that B58 engine. Nothing beats that engine. Oh my God. Oh, obviously, I'm not getting the Porsche engines here because Porsche is a Porsche is a Porsche. So as I see it, the facelift wasn't needed, wasn't something we wanted, but Mercedes has given it to us any which ways. And the GLA is as good as ever. You can't go wrong with this car. It's a nice way to enter the three-pointed star. One of the cheapest ways because the A-Class is the other cheaper way. However, if you're looking to buy a Mercedes for the Mercedes logo, this car does well. As a car, it's fantastic. But if you want a real, true blue Mercedes car, Pay a little bit more, get the GLC or the C-Class or just get something with the 63 AMG because those are not going to last long, unfortunately. And the handling is good. Yeah, there is body roll. Naturally, there has to be because we're sitting a little higher up. If you like this vlog, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That's the like button and also subscribe to the channel. I can use the paddle shifters. Make shifts. Here we go. Uh, it's upshifts slightly under 5000 RPM. It does not hold on to a gear. It doesn't really need to. Bye-bye. <laughs>